Good morning, Interweb. World Builders Log 13. Today we are going to learn how to split apart coal moving plates and begin modeling our second rifting event. So just like the last time we had a rifting event, we need to cut apart the various components here and assign them the correct plate ID. Everything north of the rift here should have a plate ID of 300 in this case. Everything south of the rift should have a plate ID of 200. So let's do that. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. I'm going to hit F on my keyboard to select feature and I'm going to select this continent here. I'm going to cut it apart to make a north half and a south half. So I'm going to clone feature. It's a continent, so it goes in the continents folder. And then I'm going to hit V on my keyboard to move some vertices to match up with the rift. We've already done this, no new information here. So time lapse mode engaged. Okay, something like that. Hit F on the keyboard to select that feature. Hit controller command E to edit feature or pop up here to the top right. This fella is not continent BC. This fella is continent B now because it contains only Craton B. It begins its life at 900 million years ago at the point of this second rifting event. And it has a play ID of 300. So that's code. Cool. We don't need to change that. All right, done. I'm going to repeat this process again to cut out the bottom half. But this time I'm just going to give it a play ID of 200. That's the only difference. Again, no new information. It's been covered before. Time lapse mode engaged. Cool, and then I'm gonna hit F on my keyboard again. I'm gonna select the original continent that contained both of the Gratons, and I'm going to edit feature. So control or command E, or on the top right here. And then I'm gonna change its age. So it began life at a thousand million years ago, correct. But it's gonna to cease to exist at this moment of rifting at 900 million years ago. So I'm gonna pop that in and then we're good. And then as far as I remember from the last time I labeled these fail rifts correctly. This should have a plate ID of 300 and it does. This should be 200 because it's on the south. It does. And this should have be 200 because it's on the south. Perfect. So next we need to cut apart the oceans here and this island arc. Now these are features where we care about the dating on them. So we're going to employ a slightly different method. So let's start with the ocean over here. So I'm going to scroll over, hit F on the keyboard, select this ocean here. Just like before, I'm going to clone it. It's ocean crust, so it goes in the ocean crusts folder. And then I'm gonna hit X on the keyboard and I'm gonna delete a bunch of points until we're only left with the north side. Bingo. It already has a plate ID of 300, so I don't need to touch anything. Hit F again on the keyboard and I'm gonna select the ocean slab again. I'm gonna clone it again. It goes in the ocean crust folder, hit okay. Hit X. And I'm just gonna start deleting points until we're left with just the southern portion. Okay, I'm going to hit F here. Now here, this plate ID will need to be changed to match with the green create on here with 200. Or we need to change it to 200. So I'm going to go up to edit feature. I'm going to go down to plate ID and I'm going to change this to 200. And hit close. And then I need to select the original slab of ocean crust. But unlike last time, where we changed its end date, we're just going to delete it entirely. And that way we preserve the, the dating on these features. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing for this other half of Ocean Crust. Exact same procedure, so time lapse mode engaged. Okay. That's the ocean crust done. So let's scroll back in the simulation and let's see if there are any issues. Okay, something's a little funny here. Why is that occurring? Oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, so if you notice here, as the simulation is progressing, this continent is already kind of cut in half. That shouldn't occur. It's not a big deal or anything, but let's just make it all nice. So I'm going to select that half here and I guarantee you I just didn't change the dates correctly. Edit feature. Yeah, there we go. That bottom half here only starts becoming its own thing at the moment of the second rifting. So that's at 900 million years ago. I'm hit OK. That should be fine. Let's check that. Cool. Much better. 
Now, the island arc, same procedure as the ocean crust, hit F on your keyboard, select the feature, clone it, delete points so you're only left with the northern half, say. It already has a plate ID of 300, so we don't need to change anything there, so I'm gonna hit F on my keyboard, select again the original feature, clone it, and then this time I'm gonna delete everything to the north. Okay, hit F and we need to change its plate ID. So uh, control or command E. And I'm gonna change its plate ID to 200 because it's stuck to the 200 portion of the continent. Select the original feature and just delete it. Boom. All right, and again, a check. Always try and check as you go. It'll save you committing an error and then only realizing it way down the line. Brill, brill. All right, and then the final islands here. Notice it's pink, so it's going to move with pink. We do not want that. So I'm going to hit F on my keyboard, and I'm going to do a thing that I recommended not doing before, but hopefully be okay. Hit Control or Command E, and I'm just going to change its plate ID straight up. Really hope this won't cause any problems, but let's give it a shot. And close. Yes, okay, cool. Sometimes what will happen is the feature will jump around the globe, Thankfully, it didn't do that here. Fantastic. So everything in the north is pink. Everything in the south is green, barring the subduction zone. We need to do the subduction zone and then we're ready to rift. So this is actually thankfully easy. Hit F, choose a subduction zone. Hit T for the, what's it called? Split feature tool, yep. And you can only do this with lines. And you simply just, at the point you want to split, you just click. And G-Plates will have created, hit F on the keyboard, one copy to the south and one copy to the north. Dead easy. And the southern copy, we are going to change its plate ID to 200. Now, and one final check. Solid. Okay, now we can start rifting. So the problem here is that this green chunk, it's been moving with pink. So it's just been following what pink has been doing. Which means if we attempt to try and, oh, if we go forward a time step, let's go forward to 850, hit five on the keyboard, hit F to choose feature, hit P on the keyboard, and then go up to top right and highlight children. You'll see here that if we move this, everything in white is gonna go with it. So we need to decouple the bottom craton from the top one so they can both move independently. So to do that, hit controller command M to bring up manage feature collections and just save all changes. The important thing here is that the rotation file is saved. So we're gonna open that rotation file in text edit or whatever plain text editor you're using. So we wanna decouple everything with plate ID of 200 from 300, right? So what that means is take the last entry in that plate, which also happens to be the first entry in this instance. And remember G plates reads the file backwards, copy that and paste it above it. Then change the time here to the rifting event. So the rifting event is gonna happen at 900. It's gonna be completed by 850. So it's gonna happen at 900 for me. So I'm gonna put in 900. And we'll make a little note here, a little comment, and say that this line of code, end following C. So this makes it so that it's gonna stop following C. And then we're gonna copy this again, and we're gonna paste it above it. And this is going to be our start moving independently line. Then change the plate ID of this line, the start moving independently line, change that to 000. So it's decoupled from 300. Now don't save anything, leave everything the way it is. Go back to G plates, hit control or command P to bring up this total reconstruction poles. The value here needs to be the moment of rifting. So I actually need to scroll back in my simulation a little bit. Sorry, bear with me. Controller command P. So the value here, like I said, it has to be at the moment of rifting and this has to be zero. Then click on equivalent rotations relative to anchored plate and then find the current location of the plate you want to move independently. So I want 200 to move on its own. Currently it's at a latitude of this, a longitude of this and an angle of this. So we'll go back to text edit and fill in these values in these columns here. 
Okay, so the first one here, that is the latitude, that's 61.1665. This value here is the longitude, and that's negative 18.3597. And this value here is the angle, that's 33.5664. And then finally, copy all of this and put this above it, and we'll turn this into our usual drift correction. That means everything's kept the same except we change our time to 1.0 or any small non-zero number. Okay, so we're ready to save the rotation file. Let's get rid of some of these lines. Very good, we hit save. We'll go back into G-Plates, hit Command or Control M to bring up Manage Feature Collections, and we are gonna find our rotation file and reboot it. Now, hopefully, absolutely nothing should have changed, save for the fact that we can now move these two independently. So let's see if that works. This is always the moment of truth. So I'm gonna move forward 50 million years. I'm gonna hit five on my keyboard to bring up the pole manipulation tool. I'm gonna hit F to select a feature. P, highlight children up here is selected and notice, notice everything in white here is exactly what we want to move with this half of the continent. If I hit F again and select the bottom half, hit P, you'll notice everything here is exactly what I want to move. Okay, and then just like before, hit O, go up to the top right here and enable pole, and we'll move this fella around in combination with the P menu and the O menu to split these apart. Now I'm thinking again, because these are rifting apart, this is this fella is gonna travel northward and this fella is gonna travel southward. No new information, so time-lapse mode engaged. Okay, something like that. The flow lines will be funky. Don't worry about it. We're going to need to repair them in a second. Like last time, controller command plus shift and K brings up the kinematics tool. And I want to look, I'm moving plate ID 300. So I want to drop in plate ID 300 here. And I'm looking for the speed of this plate between 900 and 850 million years ago. So beginning at 900 million years ago, ending at 850 million years ago. And I want velocity. I'm going to hit update and we are traveling at one centimeter per year. That is a bit slow, because again, we have mid-ocean ridge, ocean, continent, subduction zone, basically South America again. So we're looking at about three centimeters per year. So I'm just gonna move him a little bit further. Two point nine centimeters per year, that will do. And now I'm gonna repeat this exact same process, but for the Southern continent. Okay, cool. And um, don't forget about this continent here. It's also going to be moving. So I think this is just going to keep heading west, I guess we'll call it. So I'm going to place this pole right up on top, we'll say, and just have it make a great circle like this. Nothing too fancy. Yeah, something like that. Let's have a look at the simulation thus far. No, in fact, let's not do that. Let's put in drift correction to make sure these don't move everywhere. So command or control M, and I'm gonna save this rotation file to input this new data into the rotational file. And then I'm gonna open up text edit, line breaks, and then the latest timestamp, that's 850 million years. I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna paste it into drift correction. In fact, actually better idea, I'm just gonna copy the coordinates and paste them into the coordinates of drift correction. Boom. Copy the coordinates, paste into drift correction, copy, paste, remove line breaks, save everything up, back in G-Plates, command or control M, and I'm gonna reload that rotation file. And then all the flow lines will get even worse, but that's fine because we're gonna to need to reconstruct them. So let's just check if this movement is decent. That looks pretty sweet to me. And uh, make sure we go back to our correct timestamp. 
Okay, so now we need to fix these flow lines. I would recommend saving at this point because things can go wrong. Uh, Controller Command M and just save all changes before you save. And then File, Save Project. Now, sometimes it's easy to just kind of tweak the lines, I guess. But in this case, I'm just gonna delete them and wholesale remake them. So F on the keyboard, select the flow lines and simply delete feature. So let's start with the easy ones. Let's set up flow lines between continent C here and continent B. So I'm gonna go back to when they were attached. That's 900 million years ago. I'm gonna select my rift. I'm gonna copy points to digitize tool. Hit M on the keyboard to turn that into a bunch of points. Very important. Create feature. This is gonna be a flow line. Hit next. Left plate ID and right plate ID. So the adjacent plate IDs are 300 for the pink and 200 for the green. And these flow lines will begin at the moment of rifting. So that's 900, oh, that's incorrect. At 900 million years ago. And they'll continue into the distant future. And name will be flow lines 900. Same thing as before, standard way of setting up flow lines. Next, we're gonna hit add. So from 900 million years ago, to the end of the simulation in steps of 10 million years, perfect. Hit insert, bunch of timestamps between 900 and the end of the simulation, hit okay. Next, and then we'll save this in flow lines and we'll go create. I'm gonna check if that worked. Yes, very nice. So now we need to make flow lines between this continent and these two continents. So this is a little bit more complicated. Again, we'll go back to the moment of rifting between these continents. So that's the very start of simulation in this case, a thousand million years ago. Because I want one set of flow lines to connect between blue and pink and the other between blue and green, what you can do, in fact, what you should do is hit F on the keyboard, select the rift, hit T on the keyboard to bring up the split feature tool, and then just simply split the rift in half. Now, where does the split occur? It's going to be, where is it? here yeah so these this point here matches up with this point so everything north of that goes that way everything south of that goes that way so that is the splitting point so we'll go back to our moment of rifting and we will split it here so we should have two copies here one rift in the south and one rift in the north perfect so we'll keep that selected that northern rift i'm going to copy points to digitize tool i'm going to hit m on my keyboard get an error but then go over to the top here Digitize new multi-point geometry. Hit create feature, flow line, adjacent plate ID. So 100 is adjacent and we're connecting up to the pink one, which is 300. The beginning time for these flow lines will be when this rift opens, that's a thousand million years ago. And we'll call this flow lines at 1000 million years. Next. Now, usually you'd have to add a bunch of points here. And in fact we do, but it's grayed out. So what you need to do is you need to go down to this section here, scroll to the bottom and under GPML times, double click that and ensure that all of these times are accurate. And in this case, they are not. In this case, they're only going from 900 million years. So we do not want that. We want to go from all the way at the start and then hit insert and then do a quick check of this to see if everything's fine. Yep, thousand million years ago, all the way to the end, done. Then hit next and put it in flow lines, create. Again, we'll play and we'll just check to see if everything's gravy. Boom, look at that tastiness. So back to the start of simulation. We'll select that Southern portion of the rift. And again, if you have trouble selecting, go down to the bottom here and select rift. Copy geometry to the digitize tool, hit M or come over to the left here, digitize new multi-point geometry, create feature, exact same method here. Flow lines, left plate ID is 100, correct. Right plate ID is going to be 200 because we're tying the blue and the green together. Beginning time, 1000, yeah, flow lines 1000, perfect. Next, again, I wanna double check this, so I'm gonna scroll down to GPML times, double click that, and we should see 1000 here, correct and a thousand there, correct. So we hit okay, hit next, save it in flow lines and go create. And now all our flow lines, barring a small exception we'll get to in a bit, should be decent. Beautiful, absolutely lovely. Now you see this one chap here that's kind of poking out a little bit, don't worry about him, it's fine. The important point is that all of these are now connecting up nicely. 
So the next thing to do here is to create some ocean crust. Again, no new information here. It's the same way we've been creating ocean crust for the past couple of videos. So time-lapse mode, engaged. that is the ocean crust in. Now you notice I've left this bit blank here. What we have here is basically a triple junction. We have a mid-ocean ridge coming along here and another mid-ocean mid ridge coming here, meeting at a T-shape here. So the way in which we do this is kind of like we have to do it kind of manually. So for each of the six surrounding plates here, we want to select a plate, say this chap here. We want to hit I on the keyboard to insert a point. We want to insert a point somewhere in the middle here then hit V on the keyboard, and we're gonna just pull this point out somewhere in the middle of this triangle. Okay, and then we just repeat that for all the surrounding plates. Bingo, triple junction, done. So we will need flow lines to compensate for the motion that's going to occur in this little triangular section. So this is really simple. Just hit M on the keyboard to bring up that point tool. I can never remember these names. Digitize new multi-point geometry. And all you have to do is just plonk down a point where all the vertices meet. Then go create feature, flow lines. And let's say we're going to do connecting blue to pink here. Plate ID 100 to plate ID 300. So 100 to 300. These will begin at 850 million years at the current time step, continuing to this future. And we're gonna call these flow lines 850. And we hit next. Again, with flow lines, we have to add points. So we hit add from 850, insert. Yup, 850 to zero, great. Hit okay, next, and we'll save it in flow lines, create. And then you repeat the exact same process again two more times, linking first blue to green and then green to pink. All right, time lapse mode engaged. Done. Right, and final thing we're going to do today is we're going to add in new subduction zones because we have this change in motion and some island arcs for those new subduction zones. So as we can see through the simulation, these are moving um, this way. And then the rift happens. And now this chap is moving like hard north. And this chap is moving like, I guess, hard south as well. So that means there's going to have to be a subduction zone. This subduction zone here, I'm imagining it's going to have to widen to, you know, get more of a northern motion. And the same thing here, if this is heading south, hard south, this subduction zone is going to have to come across here to allow for that motion. So let us go to the moment of rifting, our second rifting event, 900 million years ago. Okay, so I'm gonna select my subduction zone here, the one I want to extend out, F on the keyboard, select the subduction zone. I am going to clone it. It's a subduction zone, it goes in the subduction zones folder, hit okay. Then I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard to insert points. And I'm just gonna insert some points and gonna bring the subduction zone around like here, say. The way I'm thinking about it is that like the mid-ocean ridge might be continuing up and the subduction zone meets it here somewhere. Something like that. Hit F, oh sorry, hit X rather. And I'm just gonna delete these points away from the old subduction zone. So I just get the newly extended bit, which is this bit. Then I'm gonna hit F. I'm gonna edit feature, control or command E. And we're gonna call this subduction zone at 900. It began life at 900 million years. It'll go on to the distant future. And player ID is 300, correct. That should be fine. Okay, and so now we can just, you know, we can select different parts of the subduction zone and see the dates 
on that. It's really just one big thing, but broken apart for the sake of chronology. Okay, quick check. Cool. I'm going to do the exact same process here. This time I'm thinking I'm just going to bring it around. I'll continue the path it's already going on, maybe swoop it around here and bring it back to meet the coastline here. And I'll extend it out all the way to the end of the plate, to the mid-ocean ridge. And just to be clear, I'm basing all this on feeling and trying to explain the motion of the plates. You may look at the setup and say to yourself, no, these subduction zones would need to be placed in a different place. All right, so I'm going to repeat this process just like I did up here. Cool. And so no new subduction zones are needed here because nothing has really changed. It's just, it's just going west. This is just doing its thing. And remember our rule of thumb, 50 million years after a subduction zone opens, expect island arcs. So the subduction zones in the north and south opened at 900 million years ago. So at 850 million years ago, we'd expect some island arcs. So again, this is not new information. It was covered in previous videos. So I'm just going to time lapse through this. Okay, so that is how to split apart coal moving plates, how to deal with oceanic triple junctions, adding new subduction zones, adding new island arcs. Cool. In the next video, we are going to learn how to split apart micro continents. So I'm thinking maybe down here, we could re-engage this rift and split this thing apart, or we could maybe engage this rift. That's probably the better idea because this continent's not really doing much and split him apart and maybe send him on a collision course with this continent. So lots of fun to look forward to. Oh, and before I go, just a quick PSA. I'm going to be in the UK starting Monday for about 10 days. So the next video is going to be slightly delayed. I'm not going to be able to work uh, whilst away from my computer. Normal service resumes thereafter. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, folks. Thanks again to World Building Pasta, whose methodology this is. And thanks to Vanga Van Gogh, resident artist. Have a great one and until next time, Ed Grouse.